Hello and welcome to Smock Dev Workshop. I'm Smock and today we are going to talk about cold stack. So if you ever tried to write a computer program or to understand how computer programs work, you heard about functions, procedures, methods. They have different names. So programs basically rely on possibility of calling a function and from that function calling another function and then another, another, another to get a result, to compute some value, to achieve some side effects. But how does this happen? What happens when function is called? You heard about call stacks, right? Call stacks are basically stacks of those calls. So when you call a function, you put your call on a stack and then you call another function. You put another call on a stack. You keep calling the functions and keep stacking those calls on this call stack. You take your calls off the stack as you complete the functions. You may take two because you completed two and then maybe you call something else. You call another function you put one back on the call stack and so on, so forth. You keep putting and removing your functions from this call stack until your program completes. And we know that your program completed because you removed last call from your call stack. Okay, that seems easy, right? But how does the call stack actually work? What happens when you call the function in computer's memory, what happens in computer's CPU. So today I'm going to explain call stacks, how they are built, how they are structured in computer's memory, how they correlate to actual running code, and what do they do with CPU registers. So stay tuned and enjoy. You may think that when you put your function on a call stack and then put another and another, your program is actually copying your code into each of those calls. That's not true. That's not what is actually happening. Your program lives elsewhere in separate piece of memory that is not anywhere near the cold stack itself. So let's dive in into the structure of a stack a little bit. Each call is represented by this structure that we keep in memory that is called stack frame. So stack frames contain multiple pieces of information regarding this call. I'll get into details in a second, but for now, one single call is represented by one stack frame. So these blocks and these small bookmarkers are here to help me explain how call stack works. So what do we need? Well, we need memory, RAM memory. So let's start with what each block represents. Each block represents a single word. So quick explanation, if you don't know what word is, well, word is a basic unit of size when it comes to memory or CPU registers. So for an architecture of 32 bits, you will have a word of size of 32 bits. 64 bits architectures, of course, 64 bits. So either four or eight bytes per this block, right? It depends on the architecture. It doesn't really matter. Call stacks are structured very similarly across different architectures. For example, in C++, as for a 32-bit architecture, integer would be stored in one word, right? It would be a size of the word. We have other types, for example, char, which could be stored four times in this word, right? You could have four chars in this word. But for sake of simplicity, we are not going to concern ourselves with that. So what do we need a part of the memory blocks? we need a CPU registers. And just to mark those, we are going to use these small bookmarks. So this will come in handy because 
CPU registers that we are going to be using will be actually pointing at piece of memory, right? So if I have like five words of memory right here and I have the CPU register that is pointed to this memory, I will just denote it like so, right? So this CPU register is pointing to this block of memory. So in Intel architecture for 32 bits, all CPU registers are prefixed with this E and that tells us, okay, that will be actually a CPU register. And we have two registers that we are going to use. One is ESP, which stands for stack pointer, right? And the second one is EBP, which stands for base pointer, or also known as EFP, as in frame pointer. This is our memory, these are our registers, and we are ready to go. For sure you know that we have at least two types of memory, right? Automated or local variables which live on the stack in the local memory of this function. So they won't be accessible after your program leaves the scope of these variables, right? doesn't matter if this is a single block or entire function or something else. And we have other type of memory which is called the heap. Now there is a very significant performance difference in terms of using the heap versus using the local stack variables. And here we are going to explain why is that. You may think, okay, it's because of the size of the objects. Actually, yes and no. So bigger objects are allocated on the heap and smaller like primitive variables or small objects are allocated on the stack. But the price that you pay for allocating on the heap is the actual price for marking a block of memory as registered just for your object. Basically allocating, calling the malloc, finding appropriate block to store your variables in and putting this data in there. When it comes to stack, you allocate your memory once for entire stack at the beginning of the program, right? So when you run your program, you allocate your memory and that is it. Most likely your programs won't never ever resize your memory allocated for stack. And this is for good reason, right? Not only to, well, give us performance, but also to give us information that something went wrong with our program when we do a recursion. So when you call a function that is recursive, you basically call the same function over and over and put new and new calls to this function on the stack. And what you may end up with is actually endless recursion. And that means that you will never ever stop adding your calls to the stack. Eventually, you will hit the threshold of this memory that's allocated for the stack. And hitting this threshold helps you to detect where the problem in your program is. Then the program will throw an exception that is called stack overflow. I don't really know why everybody's explaining the stack upside down, but I think this is actually better. So at the top, we have the lowest addresses at the bottom, we have the highest addresses. So this is our maximum value of memory that we have allocated for our program. You cannot allocate anything more than you have at the very bottom of your stack. If you allow users to input their data directly into your stack, they may overwrite or actually overflow your buffers. So this is a buffer overflow attack. What happens is user writes to this piece of memory, but because the information given from the user is longer than memory reserved for this piece of data, they start affecting this piece of data as well. So they override these two values and they go on and on until they finally reach this piece of memory and they override this piece of memory. And this is very key and important component in your stack. It is used by runtime environment to know where in your code of your application you want to return to. So if you are a very mischievous person, you will replace the address stored in this piece of memory with address to your code. That is also possibly a piece of this input that you've given to the program. And that's how you end up with hacking. 
So if you're interested in how this type of attack is executed, how it's uh, structured and what you can do to prevent uh, getting attacked in this way, and also what modern compilators and operating systems are doing to avoid the situation that unaware programmer gets himself into a trouble because somebody exploited this uh, mechanism of stack, be sure to leave a comment and tell me that you're interested and I will be sure to make a video on this topic. <laughs> so this is all for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something. And as always, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next episode of Smog Dev Workshop. Thanks for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! Bye.